Hello everybody, how's it going? VDS here. First of all, I want to go ahead and take a minute out of this video before I get started to uh, kind of give a little bit of information regarding the month-long absence I took. Um, I'll probably do a separate update video <sighs> regarding my little one-month break, but I want to let you guys know that I'm very grateful for you guys sticking with me over this month-long period of sort of just taking away from YouTube for a bit. And uh, I hope to see you guys more in my future content. But again, I will probably make a separate update video for that. In the meantime, however, I asked you guys uh, about a week before the recording of this video what you guys would like to see for my next video when I return. And the number one response that I got was a tutorial on how to use the Dolphin emulator with the Samsung Galaxy S9. So I recently bought this phone off of Amazon, or uh, eBay I believe it was, for $250. Now, I will go out right now and say, if you're looking for a phone that will play GameCube games, almost every GameCube game at full speed, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a Samsung Galaxy S10. The reason I got the S9 is because it was more affordable for my price range, but a good amount of GameCube games will still play at full speed on this phone. So the first thing I'm gonna do here, I have this little Bluetooth controller that I bought some time ago. I'm gonna go ahead and set it up real fast. Activate Bluetooth, turn the thickening on. All right, cool. So now we are connected to Bluetooth. Sorry about the camera angle. It has been a while since I've recorded anything. Anyway, let me just zoom in a little bit there. There we go. Okay, so first thing you're gonna wanna do obviously is to download the Dolphin emulator. I have that right here. You can uh, see kind of bad angle. Video quality is terrible, but anyway. So you're gonna download the Dolphin emulator. You can actually download that off of the Google Play Store. Just look for It'll work, please. Dolphin emulator. And it'll come up right here. Now, what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to show you um, a couple of games and I'm going to show you the optimum settings that I've been able to surmise to allow a lot of these games to actually run properly. So first thing I'm going to do here, switch that to that, pull up. Hold on. I have a little clip on the back of this thing, so it'll stand up right. So I'll go ahead and zoom in here so you guys get a better view of what I'm looking at. All right, so let me first go over the settings really fast. So if you go up here to this button right here, press that, this will give you the general settings. In general, I always have dual core on. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I should probably tell you what exactly the specs of this phone are. It comes with a Snapdragon 845 CPU, which is just a bit weaker than the 855, which is the one I recommend. That's the one that's in the Samsung Galaxy S10. And it has uh, four gigs of RAM. This is the four gig of RAM model, not the six gigs for the S Plus. Um, but all right, so let's see here. I typically leave most of these settings alone. Speed limit, I set just a hair higher than 100, just to help with some frame issues. Uh, interface, I leave that alone. Oops, interface, there we go. I leave interface, audio, paths, GameCube, Wii, advanced, all that stuff alone. So go up here to this little picture icon. Certain games will function better on Vulkan than they will on OpenGL, but for me, so far, all the games that I've tested, they only really work with OpenGL. I have had uh, graphical stutters and other minor, minor issues when switching to Vulkan. I also like to have Show FPS on, which you'll actually see when I start. It'll be in the top right-hand corner. Shader compilation, I always leave as is at synchronous because it provides the least amount of shader stuttering. Compile shaders before starting. I like doing that as well because it prevents the actual, uh, it prevents them from loading while you're going through the game. Let me actually turn the brightness up on this a bit. There we go. Uh, and then I always leave aspect ratio as auto because some games play better in 14 by, or four by three, some 16 by nine. 
Now, Pokemon XE All Darkness, which I will be showing in this video, I'm gonna wanna have that as four by three because when transitioning between certain sequences in the game, it has a tendency to fluctuate between uh, 16 by nine and four by three. So for GameCube games, you're gonna want it set to four by three, but for Wii games, you're gonna want it set uh, with uh, 16 by nine. Now, I will not be doing any Wii videos, or uh, Wii games in this video, and also, I cannot tell you where to actually get the games. A quick Google search will point you in the right direction. So, go to enhancements here. I prefer to keep the internal resolution at one X, and the reason being, any higher becomes very taxing on the CPU and the GPU. I prefer to keep it at 1x. It lo still looks great at 1x on this screen. I always keep anti-aliasing anti off, anisotropic, anisotropic, anisotropic filtering at 1x. That's its uh, default setting. Post-processing effect is off. Again, that's also default. I leave scale EFB copy, per pixel lighting, force texture filter all off. Those are all, again, uh, stock settings. Disable fog only, I only use disable fog in Metroid Prime 2, and the only times I actually do it are on my computer, and I'll get to that in a minute as to why. Uh, then we have arbitrary map protection, disable fog copy filter, I leave those checked, and the rest of that is pretty much stock. So then we'll go to hacks. I have skip EFB access from CPU, it ignores any request from the CPU to write or read to the EFB, ignore format changes, store EFB copies to texture only, and defer EFB copies to RAM all on. Beyond that, everything else is pretty much stock and you don't need to really mess with it too much. Now, I tend to not fuss around with the individual game settings, if you hold if you press and hold one of the games in your library, you can go ahead and you can actually change the settings of that game specifically. I tend to leave them alone. All of the files that are used on this emulator were the ones that I copied over from my computer. So if you do have a computer that's already running Dolphin and you don't want to lose any of your data or anything, you can go ahead and switch it over to that. Now, I do believe I lost connection. So let's go ahead and get into some gameplay real quick. First thing I'm gonna test is Super Smash Bros. Melee. That is one of the easiest games to emulate on the Dolphin emulator. You're also gonna notice that the uh, key overlays, you can actually change that by going here to overlay controls. You can toggle controls, hold on. That is really loud. Toggle controls. You can toggle them all on, or in my case, I'm going to toggle them off. Also, you'll notice in the top uh, right-hand corner here, it'll actually work here, it is currently running at some between 60, a little bit higher than 60 FPS. So I got my controller over here, I already have everything mapped. Now, if you can't really tell from the volume, the volume is actually sped up because I have the actual emulator slightly sped up as far as its uh, normal speed is concerned. So let me go ahead and get into a match on Melee real fast here. Uh, also, for the record, I am actually using a, uh, a hacked version of Melee that I hacked some of the uh, character stats with the uh, app Crazy Hand. If you guys want to see me do something with Crazy Hand, please let me know in the comments. We'll just go to Final Destination real quick. As you can see, I have instant missiles, basically, with uh, Samus here. That buzzing you're hearing is just my phone vibrating. You can always turn that off as well. So Melee on the Snapdragon 845 on the Samsung Galaxy S9 runs pretty much perfectly. I mean, I have this at 1x resolution. I could probably put it up to a higher resolution if I really wanted to. But um, for a screen this small, you don't really need a higher resolution. I love how it vibrates every time I run. But all right. So we'll go ahead and switch to the next game. Next, I'm going to show you Pokemon Coliseum. 
I'm showing these next two games because out of all of the uh, Samsung Galaxy S9 emulator tutorials for Dolphin that I have seen, I've never seen anyone test Colosseum and XD Gale Darkness. Also, apologies for the very bad uh, glitchiness regarding the phone screen right now. Or the camera, I should say. So again, this is actually sped up. So if you want to change this, I think I got to go to configure, general. Okay, so I can't change it while I'm in a game. So let me go ahead and exit the game real fast. Go back up here, go to general, speed limit, and set it back to 100%. That will fix any of the audio issues with increasing the speed beyond 100%. So I'll go ahead and boot this up. There you go, audio issues fixed. Pretty much Dolphin on the Android devices works almost identical to that on the PC. Uh, the main difference that I have seen, which I will test in one of the Metro games I will show you guys, has to do with the L and R buttons, which are quite a pain in the dick. But as you can see, Pokemon Coliseum runs just fine. I used uh, PK Hex for a bunch of Pokemon in this. Also the control stick, if you notice, I'm just pressing down. I'm just pressing down and yet, uh, hold on, let me do it like this. You can see in the bottom corner, I'm only pressing down, but it keeps going up. That could be a result of my controller. In fact, I'd probably bet money that it is. But uh, you can see that pretty much everything in Coliseum will function just fine. So let me go to my favorite game of all time, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness next. XD Gale of Darkness uh, will pretty much have the same performance as Coliseum. Uh, Colosseum and Exodial Darkness, when in battles, run at 60 FPS, but when in the, or in battles, I think it just runs at 30 FPS, but when in the overworld, the game runs at 60 FPS. So keep that in mind if you're talking about variable frame rates, and that goes for Dolphin both on the Android devices and on PC. This is another file that I also PK hexed. You'll be able to see once I open it up. After all, I have a fucking shiny Charizard for no reason. Latias, Metagross, Absol, Flygon, Gyarados. A Gyarados with Aeroblast, because why not? But this is, this is where you can really see it's very pronounced about the control stick issue. Because I'm holding down, but I'm going up. Now, thankfully enough, with Colosseum and Ixio of Darkness, there's more than one control scheme. You can use the D-pad for XD and Coliseum, or you can use the right stick, although for some reason it's also having the same problem. So for movement in XD for me, again, I don't know if this would work for the different sway for you guys, but for me, it, uh, it makes it very uh, difficult to actually move around in the game. But thankfully, uh, Pokemon XD is one of those games that you can actually play completely with just the on-screen control since the L and R buttons are not necessary for the game to run. Now the next one I'm going to try is actually going to be Metroid Prime 2, and I'm going to do two first instead of one because I have tinkered with a lot of different settings on Dolphin on my phone. Uh, I have not been able to get a max frame rate on Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. The highest I've gotten consistently is around 52 frames per second, which the game runs at 60, so there will be some slowdown. I'll also show you guys that there is a big issue with my controller specifically, although I'm not sure if this is something related to the actual emulator or if it's something else entirely, but the L and R buttons, well, specifically the L button, does not seem to want to work. Now, I've had this issue with Dolphin on my computer before as well. However, I very rarely have it on my computer. So very likely this could be a issue of um, my controller. So firstly, I'm gonna zoom out a bit here so you can see my controller in my hand. So if I go here, notice this, I'm holding the L button but I can't scan anything. Now to be fair, I can still lock on to stuff, but I can't scan anything. 
And if you notice right here in the middle of the screen, I know it's probably hard to see, but when I hold the L button, it does work, which tells me that there's something wrong with my controller itself. Because I believe, let me see, let me lock onto something, yep. I can lock on just fine. So what I'm thinking is, is that uh, it's something to do with this control button right here. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead real quick. And before I get to Metroid Prime and call this a video, let me actually show you the control setup. So if you go over here to the top right hand corner, right here where it says controls for Bluetooth, go to GameCube controller one, emulated, and you'll be able to select whatever buttons you want mapped to the controller that you're using. Now, as you can see here, I do have the L trigger mapped to a button. So I'm gonna actually map it to this, uh, wait, hold on. Map it here, so there. But unlike with the uh, GameCube on Dolphin on the computer, there's not an L and R analog, which is something that does concern me because I believe that's the reason my controller is not functioning properly. So last thing we're gonna check is gonna be Metroid Prime 1. Now Metroid Prime 1, I have seen better performance than Metroid Prime 2. I think that honestly, uh, Prime 2 is more taxing on the CPU and the GPU for the Samsung Galaxy S9. It's hard to tell, honestly, but uh, because I haven't seen many people actually covering Metroid Prime 2 in the videos that I've seen on emulation performance with the Dolphin emulator on Android. As a matter of fact, I believe I'm the only one that's actually done it because I haven't seen it once. Okay, so we're going to go ahead to, we'll go this file. Again, these files are all from my, my computer because I downloaded the, or I put over the files from my GameCube on my, or my GameCube emulator on my computer and put them on my phone. Now in this, you can see that it is a little bit better, but even still, since I switched to the buttons, now I can't use the L button at all. Oh, there we go. Oh, huh. okay, okay. Fair enough. Now let's see if it actually works further. Yep, okay, lock on works just fine. You can see in the top right hand corner, the game is more or less consistently running at about 55 to 60 FPS, which is perfect for me. So now I don't have the ability to just create that little button that comes up in the middle of the screen because I'm hitting the L button and I'm locking on but if I'm not locked onto something, the little tr the little dot thing then in the center doesn't come up. But as you can see, Metroid Prime 1 also works pretty damn well. So let me go back to Prime 2 real quick before I wrap this video up to see if the L button configuration works better in this. Because I can handle not having the ability to lock my aim if it means that I can scan things. I think it has to do with the fact that the GameCube controllers their L button has both a toggle and a press feature where you slightly depress the button like this and it, uh, it, 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 that acts as, a, as an actual input and then when it actually hits the bottom that also acts as its own separate input. So basically an analog and a digital input. So we'll do this last test here. See if my L button works properly. Okay. No, it does not. Hmm. So that actually might be a problem with Prime 2's scannability or something. It's hard to tell. Can I even lock on to anything? Let me check. Nope, even locking on doesn't work. So that could be an issue with my controller in regards to Metroid Prime 2. But that is actually gonna go ahead and do it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you guys watching, checking out to the very end. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section down below. I read all my comments. I answer them as many as I can, at least the ones that are relevant to the discussion at hand. So. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been ZDS, making YouTube for fun one video at a time, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good night, everybody.